I am Rabbi Moshe Perry. We're standing behind Beth Jacob Synagogue in Beverly Hills, where on this day, we are honoring and commemorating and memorializing the 23rd Yortzeit anniversary of the death of the passing of the great late Rabbi Meir Kahana of blessed memory, Zecher Tzadik B'Kodesh Lebracha, may his memory be for a, a blessing. He's a holy martyr, having been slain and given his life, Al Kiddush Hashem, for the sanctification of God's name in 1990. The story goes as follows that I'm going to relate, that on his passing, had he not died, the week after his death, November 4th, 1990, the 18th of the month of Mar Cheshven, he was going to be out here in L.A. as he had done in previous years, like in 1989, where after going to New York, he came to Los Angeles and he spoke in B'nai David Synagogue across the uh, blocks here, a few blocks away on Pico and Robertson. And he was going to come back for another speech there on another Monday night, the following Monday night from his speech in Manhattan. But previously to that, he had tried to arrange to come and speak here in the synagogue behind me, Beth Jacob of Beverly Hills. And the then rabbi, who I will not mention by name, I have nothing personally against him, but he has a blind spot, ha had and has a blind spot about Rabbi Meir Kahana, as many of the Orthodox community over the years have shown. And this is why we're doing this symbolic gesture tonight for his, uh, for his Yorzeit, for, the, for his um, anniversary of his passing. And the story goes that he communicated with the rabbi and congregants here in Beth Jacob, who asked the rabbi to let Meir Kahana come and speak in the synagogue, and he refused, absolutely refused. And they started a letter war through the Jewish press about, about why Meir Kahana would or would not be allowed to come here. And Meir Kahana said, I am going to come to Beth Jacob Synagogue the Sunday I uh, arrive in Los Angeles. And I, if they don't let me in to speak from the, the uh, synagogue in the, in the sanctuary, I will speak on the steps outside the sanctuary, which is around the block from here. And that was his vow or promise or threat or however you want to look at it, that he was going to push it and challenge it. And people would gather on the sidewalk and hear him speak uh, a typical speech, which I'm going to give uh, in a few minutes of what his message was to us to commemorate uh, his, his, his yurt site. Um, the rabbi refused, but unfortunately he never had his chance to challenge and make this gesture and protest gesture of, of challenging the, the, the Orthodox community here in Los Angeles. And unfortunately he, he was shot and killed and assassinated in New York the week before he was going to come out here. I thought for this year's anniversary of his death, we have done different things over the years. We've given speeches, we've held symposiums. We would like this time, I would like this time, to, to do a, a symbolic gesture to close the circle, to come to the synagogue where he was banned and barred, and give a little Dvar Torah a, as way of closing the circle, a way of, of being able to say, it is wrong to, to have done this to Rabbi Kahana. His message was pure Torah. Whether it was understood properly or not is not his problem. It is his Torah, it was his authentic Torah. And as a result, um, I've arranged with the rabbi, if it wasn't on such a short notice, the rabbi, current rabbi here, said the next year, perhaps we can speak from the sanctuary and make a memorial service. And so here's Rabbi Meir Kahana. This is his, his, his legacy we're gonna be talking about today. I'm introducing his words with the speech from Rabbi uh, ben Yami Kahana, his son, who was also martyred ten years later, uh, uh, ten months and a ten years and a, a month later, and one further point I want to make before I start: my brother Rabbi Aaron Perry, who couldn't be here today, had a rabbi who gave him smicha from Torah Vadas, the Rosh Hashiva, one of the biggest Gedolia Dor we've had, giants of our generation of leadership that we've had in New York and Yeshiva Torah Vadas in Brooklyn. He, he went to Rabbi Palm and he asked Rabbi Avram Yaakov Palm, who died in 2001, and he asked him, what should I do about Mayor Kahana, about his legacy, about, about the, uh, the fact of the matter that people want me to be involved in speaking out, about his life and about his teachings, what should I say and do or, or write? And Rabbi Palm said, well, first thing, regardless of what people thought of him 
positive or negative in the Orthodox community, it is forbidden to, to dismiss the fact that he died al Kiddush Hashem, he died a martyr's death for the Jewish people, and therefore that sanctifies him and shows that God loves him and God has raised him to a higher level in, Sh in Shemaim in heaven, and that it is, it is absolutely, you shouldn't care what people think, you should go ahead and do what you think is right about his legacy and his heritage and his teachings. With that in mind, I'm going to read and talk about from this week's Parsha, Parsha's Chayasar, which is a big deal in Eretz Yisrael. From all over Eretz Yisrael, they come to spend this coming Shabbos in Hebron. It's called Shabbos Hebron. Every year on Parsha's Chayasar, the anniversary of the death of Sarah, and she's buried in Hebron. And that's this is the Parsha where Avram Avinu bought the Mars Machpelah, the, the, the cave of the patriarchs, where all the patriarchs are buried. And this is a Devar Torah from his son with explanation or background in, in, at the end from Mayor Kahana himself from his writings and speeches. And this is called Parshas Chayasara. Whose Hevron is it anyway? Rabbi Benjamin Zev Kahana. Plus added background article from the writings of Rabbi Mayor Kahana when he wrote Who Stole Eretz Yisrael? In other words, who stole it from whom? We're talking about the, the conflict between the Arabs. So this first is Benjamin Zev Kahana's um, Parsha Devar Torah for Chayisara. Whose Chavron is it anyway? And Avraham, wait, this is the verses from Genesis 23, 16. And Avraham weighed to Ephron the silver. Rabbi Yehuda Baris.